Jen, for nothing pleases me more than to see you shine now. You're really, really coming into your own, and I see that this is truly who you are, and you're feeling it. You look beautiful tonight. The only thing I felt was wrong is that I didn't get to hear you sing more, more of this song. I'll always be grateful to her. Please welcome the one and only Paula Abdul! I am so happy to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to be here, finally. You're finally here. Finally, I'm the last of the OGs. Well, we have to say the best for last. Yes. <laughs> yes. Don't oh. you just love her, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. so amazing. And I have to say, you were always extra supportive on the show. She used to get us gifts and stuff, y'all, which was very encouraging. Like, you know, you were the, soft, you. the softness of it all that kept us at least I like to think ground. Someone had to be. <laughs> Definitely you know? wasn't, wasn't gonna be the guy to the left of me. Yeah, for you sure. know. Because at back then, time it wasn't too nice. He wasn't Welcome very to smooth. my world for a decade. Was he hooked up on you too, Paula? Tough on me? Yeah. I I would I'd have spikes on my heels so I could <laughs> kick them underneath the table. I mean, honest to God. <laughs> I never thought about what it was like for the judges to sit <laughs> next to Simon. But he's so mellow now. Well, he's a daddy. Is that what changed him? I think so. You think so? I think so. Because it felt so different when he came here. I said, this ain't the same, son. What's up? I know. I know. You feel the same way? Yeah, he's different. Wow. Not that different, though. <laughs> Not that different? Not that what different. What do you think is still the same? Oh, gosh. He's snarky, as always. <laughs> He's snarky. I mean, Paula telling on you, son. Yeah, no, seriously. And he still makes jokes every time I see him. He goes, "Come here, Paula. Come here." <laughs> like how I would say to my chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> so I know people still come up to me about me being eliminated from America. I do. Do people still come up to you about it? Oh my goodness. I mean, that was like, that was a moment when you were eliminated. It was like the whole world was pissed. <laughs> They'd still be mad. They still, that's true. Yeah. I'm sure they come up to you. I mean, people still talk to me about, God, that night that Jennifer Hudson was eliminated. Really? I go, I know. And I, I remember interviewing you mm -hmm. after, and wow. on, when we, I was on Entertainment Tonight, mm -hmm. and I said to you, you know, I have a feeling some amazing things are gonna happen to you. Remember I said, you sometimes the people that need to win, win, mm -hmm. and the people that don't need to win end up winning big time. And wow. you did. Thank you. Thank you see, for that encouragement you always have given me. I appreciate it so much. Wait a minute. It's been 20 years since American Idol started. Can you believe it? I know. 20 that, years? That was like a whole grown up ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, because I was 22 when I was on Idol. I'm 41 now. So it's all, oh, and I was season three. Seventh place and proud of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so tell me this: a psychic predicted that you were you were going to be on Idol. This is this is absolutely true. Yeah. I I was gifted a gift certificate to see a a, a psychic, and I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. And I remember this was three years before American Idol even started, and she proceeded to tell me that I'm going to be doing a television show. So, like a talent show, and I was like, what? I mean, my only reference had been Star Search from decades ago. I'm right. like, I'm not doing that. She goes, <laughs> honey, you willed it to happen. It's happening. You're doing it. And I'm like, I didn't pay attention. She said I'd be sitting in between an <laughs> <laughs> with an R um, across the pond, uh -huh. um, and that he will be the thorn in my side and that I'll be sitting also to the right of me in between a, a gentleman that I already know. Um, his name starts with the letter R. Mm. And they said, and she said that it would be at a studio with the initial F. She said it was gonna be the biggest show, break records on television. <laughs> and um, I paid no attention to it. I really didn't. And it was almost three years to date when I was called into Fox. You started out as a Lakers girl? I did. And I heard you almost didn't make the audition. No, I, 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 I <laughs> Look at this. Well, I knew that uh, the girls I was auditioning with, they were all up there. <laughs> and they said, hey, Polly, you want to try out to be a Laker girl with us? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't look like you. And they said, oh, but you're good. Come on. What do you have to lose? And then I figured, you know what? 
when I was a little girl, my dad taught me at eight years old, he said, because uh, I'd say, Dad, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Oh, there's my daddy. I'm going to make it one day. And he said, well, honey, you're going to be faced with rejection. And rejection, you're going to be told no. And that you're going to have to accept that, that it's OK. Because I'm going to tell you something. Remember this, honey. No is the beginning of a negotiation. Yeah. Whoa. Love that. And I carried that with me my whole life. So when I, when I got to, uh, I was the only girl in carpooling with four other tally, talls, and I was the small. And I, I figured, I'm not the obvious choice. I'm never the obvious choice. So I brought a bag of, of clothes, you know? Mm -hmm. I brought a dance bag. So there were thousands of girls auditioning, and I was number 742, I remember the number. And, um, and I remember they took, you know, hundreds at a time, and I got up, and it was my, my line, and I'm like this. Yeah. Yes. On my toes. And, I, and they go, when we call your number, please step forward. And I'm going, and two of my friends were called, and I'm going, yes. <laughs> and I'm sitting here on my toes, and number 742, and I stepped up, and I'm like, and then I heard from the voice from God, all right, if we called your number, we're thinning the herd. You can come back next season. Aww. Didn't even get to dance. So three of the girls, me and two girls, were, I was so pissed. Oh, there were two girls left, and I was so aggravated. And I'm, I ran to the bathroom, and I got into the stall, and I said, no, it's the beginning of a negotiation. And I took off my leotard and tights, mm -hmm. put on a new leotard and tights. And this time, I put my hair in a ponytail. Go on, Paul. And I entered as my middle name, Julie. And I spelled my last name A-B-B-A-L. <laughs> and I went out there. And the two girls that were cut with me were like, you can't do this. You can't. And I went. And I ran out to the next two girls. And they were like, that's not fair. I can't believe you're doing this. You can't do And I'm like, there are no rules. I mean, right. so like, make who cares? Rules. And so I did it. And then all three of us got cut. Uh, you got cut again? I got cut again. And then I said, guys, can you just wait? Wait one more round. I still have one more outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, they said, no. No, no, we're leaving. Take a bus or a cab home. I went. Really? They go, really? And I went into the stall. I saved the best for last. I pulled out the Jane Fonda red and white chevron stripe leotard. You knew what to do. <laughs> I put blue leg warmers on. I put blue wristbands and a blue headband. And now I had to enter as my first initial P, my middle initial J, and I spelled my last name Apple, A-P-P-L-E. <laughs> and I, what am I going to do? I have to change my hair. So I put Don't tell me you half up, half bed. down, and it became very, very famous, the palm tree, Paula's palm tree on top of her <laughs> with a hair scrunchie. And I sat on the, in my office in the, on the toilet, and I said, dear God, I'm going to be bold and daring and unique, OK? I'm, look after me. And I went out there. Right as I was mm. going out, I heard back half of the arena come forward and the front half go back. So I just ran right to the middle front, <laughs> and I got to dance. And then they said, back half of the arena, come front, front, go to the back. I'm going, oh, shoot, they're going to forget about me. What am I going to do? Be bold, be daring. And I ran right back up to the front. <laughs> you were determined to make it, I, and you did. Three times the charm. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. I thought I had to never give up about me. So I heard that you and Shaq were neighbors, or our neighbors. I'm trying to get him on the show. Shaq, where you at? Shaq, what you got to come on What I got to do? What was it like being neighbors, right? What? Shaq, <laughs> Shaq was looking for, for a house, and he wanted to see mine. And of course, mine was too small for him. He stuck him down. But I told him, you know what? And I lived, I lived in a gated community, community and I, it was a cul-de-sac street. I said, you know what? There's a house right across the street that like, you should at least see this home, because maybe you can meet the builder, because it's Huge ceilings, huge door frames, everything. It would work for you. I said, in the front foyer, it's like it could be a, a, a half court. Basketball. You could have little bleachers. I mean, it's that big. <laughs> so I walked him across the street, knocked on the door, and these and my friends, they had just moved in, not even a year they were living there. And he walked in, and he was like, this is it. And he offered them quite a bit more than Oh. And said, you got to be out in a couple of weeks. And they were. <laughs> And he moved in literally across the street from me. 
that was fantastic, great. We were both represented by the same business manager. We're friends. Um, and then, I didn't know that came with like 18 billion cars as well. <laughs> So I had to go to work in the morning and drive to studios to work, but I, I had to get the keypad code so I could go and get his car keys and move his cars. <laughs> Try getting into a Shaquille O'Neal car. I literally was standing like this, standing, I'm like, with my hand, foot on the pillow, I'm like backing, backing cars out. You had to stand up in his car? Oh, I could full on stand up on his car. <laughs> Yeah, I come oh, okay. up to here on him, okay? <laughs> so, no, but the, it was, like, he had these big turtles. They'd escape his home, come across the street and end up in my koi pond. He, and when his mom would come, Lucille would come and visit, like, she'd be chasing him with a frying pan outside, yelling at him. <laughs> he'd be running like this. Um, and then, like, he always had these, these um, uh, New Year's Eve parties. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I, New Year's Eve is great and fine, but sometimes you just want to stay in. And I'm just in my sweats. And, um, and, and there's a knock on the door, and there's Shaq wearing as bright a pink of, of a shirt, a three-piece suit, bright pink, a suit? Oh, with, with great little skinny gray pinstripes, with a pink derby hat. And he took me over his shoulder, at kicking and screaming. <laughs> I didn't want to, I'm in my sweats, everyone's dressed up, he has a big party. But see, I knew what happens at midnight. So right before the clock struck midnight, I ran under the dining room table because what he does is he moons people and, and, and puts his butt on your head. So Shaq. that's Shaq, you know? If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.